Simmons DFV suspension for the Honda S2000. Right next to it over there is the Carcepts rear sway bar kit. Bought both of these brand new from Urge Designs, so thank you to Patrick at Urge Designs for hooking me up with a great price on all this stuff. Definitely recommend to go to Urge Designs if you're looking to purchase a set of this suspension uh, here. So I'm going to do a little uh, unboxing. So I've actually, in all the cars I've ever owned, I've never had a coilover suspension. I've never purchased a coilover suspension in my Civic Si. I did a full swap with the HFP Honda suspension. Uh, and those are just a fixed shock and strut like you would get from the factory. So I didn't have to adjust anything. So, and my S2000, as you know, is still on stock suspension. So this is my first attempt at putting in a set of uh, Olin's coilovers, let alone any coilovers at all. I've heard online, I've watched many unboxing videos online about how well these things are packaged. I've already kind of found that out because the boxes themselves come bubble wrapped. So uh, the company ensures that the boxes themselves don't have any damages when they get to your house. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what's inside uh, these boxes here. This is the little box inside it. These are some top hats. I'm not sure. I believe this box comes with all the springs and the top hats and the other, other box. The larger box has all the struts and everything in uh, So you got two top hats there. You got some spacers here know that there's really good instructions with this kit so you don't have to worry about uh, how to install it or anything. Got all these little semi-stacked boxes with little parts hidden in between. There's another top hat right there. And then on the bottom I assume there's just going to be one more. Yep, so I got the fourth top hat and then another bag of spacers. Inside here the only thing that's left are the springs and there's two sets of springs. Uh, the rear these are, say, 100C on them, so these are the, the 10K springs for the front. I'm going to be running these in the rear of the car because I purchased Swift springs for the front that are going to be a 12K spring rate. Now, 12K stands for 12 grams per millimeter of movement on the spring, so that is the spring constant behind this. I don't believe these are kilograms per millimeter. I believe these are newtons per millimeter, so it comes out to be almost the same, but we're going to call these 10K springs. And in the rear, right here, these are the 8C springs it says on them, but that's an 8K spring, so 8 kilograms per millimeter of movement there. Um, so I'm not going to use the rears at all. I'm going to leave them brand new in the box. These will be going on the rear of the car, and I'll put the Swift springs up front. So here's the larger box, so that's probably got all the struts and everything in it. And this is all the instructions and everything in it. See a plate already flipped out top here. It's a little Olin's book, um, and I think it has like emblems and stuff in it. I'm not going to open it right now. You got your uh, owner's manual right here. And you got these here are your dust boots. I believe you need to cut two of these. So there's your, your four dust boots for the car. A couple spanner wrenches, the knuckle busters, if you will. Um, as you can see, I've already, I'm already bleeding, so those are going to be great. Um, and here we are, wow. Okay. So there's the first two shocks uh, right on top here. Everything is, is in this sealed, molded, seal tight foam. So the foam is really, really nice. Um, here they are, super lightweight. Go ahead and set these down. I'll take a video of everything overall when I get done unboxing here. There's the other one. I'm going to take this out right here and in the bottom as you can see there's just two more shocks all right so here's everything laid out nicely the last thing i have here is the swift springs on box they're a slightly different color they're bronze i don't love the idea of having mismatched color springs on the car but you're never going to really see them so these are the swift springs as you see they say swift 120 on them uh, for 12 kilograms per millimeter spring rate and then it comes with this totally JDMAF uh, sheet here so you can't read it all. Alright so here's a quick look at all the components out of the box. Over here is the top hats. Everything on the left here is the Carcep sway bar. As you can see that's the sway bar, straight sway bar right there and that's the end links and hardware for the Carcep sway bar. Four top hats, spacers, these are the springs, these are the front two shocks. 
then the rear two shocks. An easy way to tell the fronts too is they have the bracket for the uh, brake line on them. The rears don't. And then the instruction booklet's even laminated. And then you just have your dust boots over here and just your hardware. So we're going to go ahead and follow the uh, instruction manual now and assemble these and then uh, work on putting them in the car. All right, so I've already built three of them here. The two fronts are done and one of the rears is done. I haven't set preload or anything yet on them. I'm still debating on what to do with that. Olin's gives you a nice set of instructions for the front and rear um, that are separate instruction booklets. And uh, that's because the, you know, the specs are a little different. The, the shocks for the front are significantly longer, as you can see here. So um, I'm just going to go through quick the process of installing them. These are the rear boots. Um, this is the last one I have, and this one I had to trim 52 millimeters back, uh, is what Owen recommends, since the rear shocks are so much shorter. Um, but I trimmed the the, uh, the ID of the bottom there, since it's you know it's rippled like that. So I trimmed it so that. There's a little step right here on the shock for the boot to sit, so I measured the OD of that and kind of matched the ID of where I cut the boot because it'll vary depending where you cut it. So when this drops over top, it seats nicely um, on that recessed part there. So that'll help seal off the shaft even better um, than just blindly cutting it at 52 millimeters. I believe it's actually cut at like 49 to get that diameter correctly. So. Uh, not always best to follow the book to a T. You can make slight tweaks and get it a little better. So the instructions are good, however, it was a little confusing to me at first because I did notice one thing is wrong on them, and I'll describe that in a second. So basically, you got to take off your top adjusting nut here, so you just thread that. What I do normally is I thread it all the way down, and I put the coil over, screw it in clockwise till zero clicks, and then I back out the whole thing here and unthread it from the shaft. It's a 14 millimeter um, flats on each side, so you just use a 14 millimeter wrench. And now that that is off, the inside of there, in the hole right there, um, there's a five millimeter hex, which I didn't quite find at first because the booklet um, says four millimeters in it. It says you, you need to hold the shaft with your four millimeter Allen key. So as you can see here, it says very clearly uh, to use a four millimeter Allen key for the fronts and rears, which is why it made it a pain for me because I couldn't find where a four millimeter Allen key fit, but the instructions are mislabeled. It's actually a five millimeter Allen key, it drops in the top here, and that's what you use to hold the center uh, straight when you go to tighten the top hat down. So. Basically just take this, you put your boot on first, then you take one of your smaller spacers. Uh, the instructions show that very clearly, it's a smaller one. So one thing I like to do before I go to put the, the spring on is to lower the perch all the way down so you don't have to compress it at all to get the top hat on. So I just back that down quite a bit, put your boot on, your spacer on, take your Olin spring, put it over the top of everything, let it sit way down on the perch, way down there. And then you take your top hat, Set that on top of the spacer. And then you take this stepped spacer and you slide that on top. It slides into the uh, ID of the spherical bearing. And then you take your 10 millimeter nut, which has a nylon locking ring in it. And you start to thread that on. And once you can't thread it anymore by hand, that's when you gotta put the five millimeter Allen key in the top. Take a 14 millimeter wrench. And this is a little bit awkward to do, but you just got to rotate this around while holding the Allen key. Kind of like doing sway bar end links on the factory Honda sway bars. It's kind of the same concept where you have to put the Allen key in the center of the shaft and rotate with a wrench around the nut. All right, so and after that long, awkward process, you get down to the bottom, eventually you give it a little snug it up a little bit. You don't want to over torque it or risk stripping out the Allen key for sure. So just go to a spot where about 15 foot pounds seems seems where you're at if you have a good feel for things. Um, so there we go and then once that's all torqued down the spring is obviously still loose in here because I lowered the perch. You can take your adjusting nut and thread it back on the top and then take your 14 millimeter just snug up. You don't need to crank that down at all because that's not really holding anything together. That's just sets the adjustment ring on top here. So 
factory settings 10 clicks out, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to get the factory rebound out of these shocks. I'm going to adjust that obviously as I go and find what I like best. And then uh, now that you're down here, you can bring your perch up just to make contact with the spring, with a tiny bit of preload on it, then thread up the spacer. And now the shock is completely assembled. You're ready to set your preload. I got to look into the ride height as well. Uh, the ride height's adjusted down here. Your preload's adjusted up here. But they both affect the ride height. So once you find a preload that works for you, you can leave the preload alone and tweak the ride height uh, accordingly to get your car perfectly corner balanced. So one thing to know too is I actually measured them with a caliper. The stock Olin springs are 200 millimeters uh, long and the swift ones over here are 205. So the stock measurements that Olin's gives you for the front aren't really going to apply. They tell you to do a two millimeter preload so that your spring's 198 millimeters long. So if you do a two millimeter uh, preload on the springs, you're going to want to measure that to 203 millimeters as opposed to the 198 from the Olin's. All right, so one other thing that really doesn't make sense to me either is the factory Olin's uh, manual here it says that when you're adjusting your strut length, you know, everything on the strut has the same pitch thread. You know, it's saying right here that one turn equals two millimeters change of ride height. Um, so that would tell me, you know, one revolution would change the spanner height two millimeters on the shaft here. And then you get to the S2000 specific uh, front and rear setup diagram. And it says with the actual, the actual vehicle height will change, you know, 1.5 millimeters for every revolution. So there's a half millimeter difference there discrepancy between the directions. Uh, I'm going to guess to go with the S2000 specific ones because these kind of are more generic. Uh, that's just one thing I noticed though. I brought the spanner up uh, just flush with the spring by hand. I put a little dot on it with a sharpie and uh, did one full turn and the swift spring now when I measure it from the top here to the bottom of the spring is about like 203 and a half. Um, some of it compresses the rubber top half mount too. So in actuality to get the two millimeters of the actual spring compressing, I think I gotta go a little more than a turn here. So I'm gonna go another half turn. As long as you keep the fronts kind of consistent, I don't think it's going to uh, affect things too much. So we got that adjusted. We kept our top hat kind of in the orientation of going to the car. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this again. Zero out the caliper. Usually go from the edge up here down to the bottom and just eyeball it in the spring. Now it's looking at it's like 203.1. So might do another quarter of a turn just to be sure that we got the two millimeters of preload. But uh, So basically just thread this up tight as you can with your hand really without cutting yourself and then uh, do one and three quarters turns to set kind of the rubber compression and get your spring preload at two millimeters. I'm go ahead and try to tighten these now without destroying my knuckles. Um, I've done coilover installs on other people's cars in the past to help them out but never on my own but I've really never left without my fingers being destroyed and bloody. So that is tightened down pretty good, and I think this one is ready to go in the car now. All right, so for the rears, it's a quite a bit different. I don't even follow the Olin's manual. I've done a lot of kind of reading online, and I found a chart from Saki Bomb Garage, so thank you guys for making that. Um, it's kind of a chart that uh, explains how the factory Olin's is such a very short travel that if you don't set the preload too high of the car, you'll lose a lot of travel when you lower it down based on where your ride height is set. So you could actually hit the bump stops in corners, which would really upset the car and could potentially spin you off the track. So um, I kind of used their chart and shot somewhere in the middle. Um, I don't plan to slam the car at all. I plan to only go maybe uh, three quarters of an inch lower than stock at the most. Uh, so what I've done and what I decided to try out the first time is I brought it up to finger tight, then it took about seven turns. Um, and now 
the preload is set at about 10 millimeters. So the factory length for this spring is uh, 200 millimeters, unlike the Swift. So um, I set this to where now it's at about 190.5, so maybe around nine and a half millimeters of preload. So that took about seven turns on the uh, spanner wrench here to get it to that point. And I'm gonna play with the heights of setting this once it's on the car. Right now they're locked down from Olin's. And they say this will drop the car about 25 millimeters, which is about an inch, which I don't want. So by stiffening the preload and leaving this alone, the car should probably only drop a half inch and I might have to thread this down further once I get it on the car. All right, so this right here just shows the difference between the front and the rear shocks. Uh, the rears are the yellow ones from Olin's and the fronts with the Swift. The rears have 10 millimeters of preload, the fronts have two, and the front springs come five millimeters longer. So should be about, what is that, 13 millimeter difference between the front and the rear right there. So, you know, get a good view from far away here. You can see the height difference of the perches. The rears are preloaded a lot more because the travel is a lot less, so we don't want to hit the bump stops. So the coilovers are all put together, preloaded. The only thing left to do is put them in the car and adjust the ride height. And when you adjust the ride height, like I said, you just go off the bottom rings. Thread the shock body in and out of the bottom mount. Does not affect the preload at all. And we'll probably be a little bit of trial and error to get the ride heights right, but we're on a good track.